then click not the other way around. Good evening and welcome. This is Face the Nation. Tonight, our topic of discussion revolves around two important subjects. Both are interrelated, cybercrime as well as cyber security. In a day and age where there is an increase in the types and number of cyber crimes every year, we believe here at Face the Nation that it is apt for us to take up the topic. Tonight on the show, we'll be talking about several subjects, several areas of discussion. A. How do you use social media? What do you mean by hacking a particular account? And also, what parental advice is on offer? To discuss all this and more on the show tonight, we have three individuals who are very young, very vibrant, who will be talking to us about cybercrime and cybersecurity. Let me introduce them to you. Joining us uh, for the first time on the show is Dina Dayalan Nagaratnam, Information Security Analyst, CERT, Compute Emergency Readiness Team. Thank you very much, uh, Dayalan, for joining us this evening on the show. Also joining us this evening is Boshan Dayaratnam, who is a specialist on cybersecurity. Thank you very much again for joining us on the show, Boshan. Also joining us on the show is Asela Vaidyalankara, Cyber Security Consultant. Nice to have you on the show as well, uh, Asela. So let's start off tonight's show with... Uh, Dialan Nagaratnam, Information Security Analyst, Computer Emergency Readiness Team. Uh, tell me, Dialan, what is the mandate of your organization? Uh, we are well aware that your organization comes under the purview of the government, but tell us, what exactly do you all do? Right. Um, before I start off with that, I uh, would just like to give you an introduction about Sri Lanka CERT. Um, we started off in 2006, uh, and we are subsidiary of ICTA. And our mandate is to safeguard the IT environment of Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the services we do, um, the main thing that we do is responsive service. That includes incident handling. So if there's an incident, uh, we do technically support uh, the government and the public in regards to the incident. It could be like a website defacement, mm -hmm. or it could be any, any sort of attack, or anything to do with emails. We do technical support. And the second thing that we do is um, consultancy service, which includes a pen test, which is ensuring that websites are secured. We do reports and we give it to uh, the developers to get those uh, vulnerabilities fixed. We also do network assessment, which is to make sure that the network is secure and no one could hack into that. And we do things like um, uh, when it comes to um, uh, also policy development how do you what is it, what is the importance of having a policy and how do you develop a policy we do that and also um, if you look at um, the consultant services we do um, <coughs> seminars and we have something called um, computer security week um, uh, cyber security uh, once a year week which has been conducted by Sri Lanka CERT which has been done every year um, so which is to give the public awareness about security. Mm -hmm. So as part of that, we do two main events, which is um, Hacking Challenge, which is, to, uh, which is open to anyone, open for anyone to take part. So that includes, uh, we set up an environment with vulnerabilities and we let the participant hack into a network. So, and another thing that we do is Cyber Quiz. So likewise, uh, and also let me not forget, we also get involved with a lot of forensics um, um, uh, investigations which is given by the police, the court orders that we receive. So we get those investigations done and we pass it on to the police. So these are the main things that we focus on. Oh, Darren, you speak of uh, the um, hacking challenge, but what we've seen in the past are individuals who are hacking even the president's account, the president's uh, media account. <clears throat> And then you start wondering, Sri Lanka has so much of talent, but then there's a negative aspect to that as well. Why is this something today such a huge issue? This is a growing issue now, not only in Sri Lanka, but the world over. Young people hacking accounts. Why? Right. Before you start off, since you s spoke about precedent sites, so I need to make it clear on that. So as I told you, we do do web assessment, which is pen test, which means when there's a website before a site is launched by any government organizations, they need to do a pen test, which is a security testing. So when they don't do that, and just because the functionality of their website do work, they host it, and that site gets hacked. And that's what happened with the president's site. The assessment wasn't done. 
So who is at fault if the so assessment it's not our is fault. not done? So we do assist uh, when there's a request to select. We do support. So there was no request made. And most likely when, there's, when a site is developed and when just published and when you don't look at the vulnerabilities, there are chances that it could, be, it could be hacked because hacking has become nothing in today's world because it's so sophisticated. You just have some tools, play around with it. It, make it, it makes it so easy. Young people getting into hacking, why? Because it's, it, it's, it's fun. I, I, I don't know. That's what I see. It's fun, interesting, and it's, um, you don't need much. Just internet connection with some good tools. And if you could know how to manipulate things, you should be fine. Thank you very much, uh, Dalan Nagaratnam, Information Security Analyst of uh, CERD. We, of course, would talk to him more about uh, social media, the use of social media, also uh, on parental advice, uh, which is going to be on offer tonight on the show. I now move my attention to uh, Boshan Dayaratna, a specialist on uh, cyber security. Uh, Boshan, cyber crime is multidimensional. It's quite evident that uh, citizens are, can be targeted, business establishments can be targeted, governments uh, very clearly could be targeted uh, as well, and then individuals. But really, when it comes to matters like social media, we see a lot of bullying taking place. We see fake accounts being created. How can you prevent such disasters from taking place? You cannot tell social media is, a, <coughs> is not the way to move forward. Uh, we don't need social media. That's not the way to move forward. What is the options available for us as a nation? Absolutely. I think uh, the social media has become one of the key marketing drives for many products, as you said, for many governments as well. Um, when you say not only f uh, social media, not only Facebook, so there are so many other uh, social networking sites. Now, the reason how to prevent it is basically is awareness. You need to make sure people are using it aware how to use it. If you look at Facebook, there are so much of security protocols in it, but not many of them using them. Mm -hmm. And also, you need to know what picture especially that you post. And, and you upload, and to whom you should share that with. Sometimes you go and share it uh, for in the entire public to know, or public to see certain uh, private photographs. So you're asking for trouble. And also I've seen a lot of people, for example, when they're flying abroad, uh, staying at the Bandarnaik International Airport, doing a status update, saying, I'm flying to X country, I'll be back in three days, uh, and so on and so forth. So what does it say to the public or even to a hacker or to a person who is following you? I'm not in the country, you come and do anything that you want in my house. So it's all done because people are not aware. A lot of people even take uh, pictures of their boarding passes. I've seen this uh, quite often um, on the Facebook pages and even Instagram for that matter. Yeah. So the boarding pass is one of the dangerous uh, documents that you have on your personal Why self. is it dangerous? Because that has all your information, which flight that you take, what time you're loading, what time you're uh, going into a particular air uh, airport. So, I mean, you'll be all alone, not like you're in your home country. So, uh, I mean, you might even get a taxi. So the taxi driver can pretend to be somebody else. And uh, you get into the taxi thinking it's you, suddenly you go missing. It's not all about this pomp and pageantry saying that you're traveling. There's another side to it as well, a darker side to putting up status updates on social media. That's the most dangerous thing and that's how lots of people get into trouble. And also sharing your passwords. Sometimes, like, you know, especially the youth, mm -hmm. when you're in love, you change your passwords on your Facebook. But then one party would know before the relationship ends, before the other party. So that party can change the password and uh, end the relationship. So then what happens? So these are the common mistakes that a lot of people do when you're using the social media. It's all pure ignorance. But again, uh, Boshan, there's also a good side to social media. Let's take a look at news. Uh, news spreads like wildfire, good or bad, on social media. Even before you know, uh, that a television station or a radio station breaks a story, you have Twitter breaking that story first. So there is an increasing trend that social media is taking over most of uh, the 
old fashioned uh, news uh, stations absolutely so that's the reason why i said that you got to accept the technology you can't go back uh, to the golden era saying using the newspaper that the future is technology like you know sometimes in couple of years time you might not have the newspaper you will be reading the news uh, uh, paper on a tab which is most of the newspapers have uh, come out with so you got to accept the technology you got to move forward with it and especially the youth they get into the technology much faster than anybody else so the only way to protect the society protect the human beings protect the companies or government is to educate in them how to use this technology securely uh, boshan uh, uh, dalan was talking about uh, the president's uh, site being hacked um and we saw the man in which uh, the president even pardoned this uh, uh, 16 year old boy uh, from moratua uh, for hacking into his website but then again he mentioned a very important fact he said that cert was not consulted when the site was created why i don't think it's a cert's job because when somebody create your own website it is your responsibility to make sure that it the site is secure i mean there are so much of government website if you expect the cert to do then there's nothing else but just keep on checking on the websites so it is not for someone it's easy to point a finger at somebody else but what we say is if you are creating a site it is your responsibility to make sure the site is secure and you need to do periodic testing uh depending on how important site to you maybe on a monthly basis or biannual or quarterly basis also i need to take one more point and uh, just because somebody deface or somebody have access into your uh, uh, website it does not necessarily be an hacking there can be a, a, a guest password who can just use it i mean for example there are password says like you know the user uh, name is admin and password is admin123 so is it so difficult for someone to guess that the thing so, is the thing is abortion you're talking about um, the websites having a proper secure systems and then we're talking about i want to bring an example in 2015 uh, on the 19th of october how uh, the cia director's email was hacked uh, by a teenager and you're talking about the cia uh, in the us which is supposed to be one of the secure websites in the world and then you're talking about security of websites in sri lanka doesn't really connect does it there's no 100% secure even the pentagon is not 100% secure there will be so many player uh, people who are attacking or some may get rejected some may be able to penetrate into it it doesn't matter who you are what you are if you are ignorant on security you are vulnerable thank you very much uh, boshan da ratna special uh, specialist on cyber security i now move my attention to uh, asela vaidya lankara cyber security consultant uh, asela i want to talk to you about terrorism we talk about terrorism using weapons however now terrorism has shifted completely it's about crime terrorism and then cyber security all working hand in hand absolutely where do you see the future in terms of cyber terrorism well is it a growing threat in the world i think you hit the spot right on so now what they say the warfare the theater of warfare from moving onwards in the mm. modern age is not going to be land sea or air it is going to be in cyberspace and we see that happening for the last decade starting from somewhere like 2007 2008 such the importance of cyber and the cyber security against acts of terrorism was very evident when the united states the world's most powerful military opened its own cyber division cyber protection division in terms of land sea and air and now they have a cyber as well so that is how important they have placed on cyber security and cyber terrorism and we see enough and more times that people have taken their political causes we have seen enough and more times people have taken their uh, vendettas politically their messages politically and turned it into in a cyber security or in a cyber space we have we see examples of websites getting hacked so that a political message is is being propagated for example uh, if we take last year's presidential election uh, donald trump's websites donald trump's resorts were repeatedly hacked by a hacker collective called anonymous to uh, protest to some of the statements that he had made Uh, in the campaign trail 
So that, that is a, a another nature of cyber, another nature of cyber terrorism that's happening. But more dangerously, now we have criminals who have shifted onto cyber, the cyberspace, and they're doing their activities, their illicit activities online. Many countries across the world are spending millions on cyber security, um, Asela. Uh, let's talk about Russia, for an example. Uh, in October 12, 2016, the Russian president said that uh, they are investing a lot of money on cyber security. And then uh, exactly uh, one month and a few days later, we saw uh, in 2016, on November 6th, uh, the United States announcing that there is an increasing cyber terrorism um, against uh, Hillary Clinton. And right after the U.S. presidential election was over, everyone was pointing the finger at Russia, saying they manipulated uh, the numbers uh, through cyber terrorism. You have countries like this investing money. Where do you see Asia investing money on cyber terrorism? Worldwide, do you think countries like Sri Lanka would ever invest money on something of this sort? That, that's a very good question. Worldwide, right now, the damage that cyber incidents like this causes well over 160 billion US dollars. So that's a lot of money. When it comes to Asia, now we are the fastest growing economic powerhouse in the world. It is very pertinent that especially countries like us who are on the path of digitization, we are talking digitization, our banks are moving into digitization, our citizens are moving well and truly fast into social media and the digital space. But Yet the question should be asked, are we backing it up with policies? Are we backing it up with infrastructure? Are we backing it up with agents? Are we agencies and organizations? Are we equipping agencies and organizations like SL Cert, who is doing a yeoman service right now with the limited resources they have, protecting the, the government assets? So these are the questions that we should ask because this is something that we need to focus on. This is something policymakers need to focus on right now. Um, Asela uh, Boshan said that um, we are not 100% safe. Everyone's vulnerable if they have a website. I'm posing a question to you a bit differently. Is Sri Lanka under threat from cyber terrorism? Absolutely. It's only a matter of time. Uh, you know, when we, when we talk to people, when we educate them on cyber security, mm -hmm. uh, they talk as if it is a fairy tale. But uh, the, the reason I think Boshan and everyone in this industry will agree that it is only a matter of time before a major attack occurs in Sri Lanka. Now, for example, I think a few weeks back, uh, because of this ransomware, in fact, a few days back even, there was Ukraine. The country of Ukraine was completely shut down. All of their ATMs were not working. All of their government services were not, not working. Their power stations were shut down. Such is the extent of cyber terrorism. Such is the extent of the power of cyber terrorists have mm -hmm. over our daily lives. And right now, we're sitting pretty at this moment because we are not affected to that, that, that level. But that is not far away. Let me remind you that we are doing a lot of digitization right now in our banks. We are moving a lot of our uh, state services into a digital space. Uh, we are moving even our national ID into a digital digital medium. We are trying to give government services in a digital medium. Now, this is a very good trend that's happening. But what happens is, with this, alongside this, we must start talking security. As Boshan pointed out, no one is safe, not even the mighty NSA, the National Security Agency of, of the United States, mm -hmm. whose secrets are right now out in the open. And I must add, because of that, actually most of these ransomware attacks that are happening do happen because the exploits and the cyber weapons that they had developed are now out in the wild for all these Thank hackers to use. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Asela Vaidya Lankara, uh, cyber security consultant. I open the floor for questions from our journalists, but uh, before that, let me very quickly introduce them to you. On to my immediate right is Farash Shahkutali, host of uh, Newsline. Thank you very much, Farash, for joining us uh, this evening. Thank you. Uh, also joining us this evening is uh, attorney at law, Sonali Vanega Baduga, and on to my far left is uh, Charita Fernando. So let's uh, start off tonight's show with uh, Sonali. Thanks, Shamir. Um, my first question is uh, to you, Darren. Now, there's a growing threat to children and young persons, which is po posed by bullying and sexual harassment through social media. So how does CERT come into the picture? 
Right. Um, I think I need to make this very clear. Now, search mandate is not about social media. What we do support, uh, we do handle, we do technically help people with social media problems as a community service right and um, uh, as, as a community service and still we do uh, if there's a fake profile prof uh, created we tell them how to take down we tell them how to report and if they're unable to take it off we do have a connection with Facebook which we contact which, which, which we get in touch and we help the profile to be taken off and likewise if there's any content removal we do but that is just as a community service you're saying that you're engaging in a task which is outside your mandate. It is indeed. Because because of uh, the number of instances that these things get reported to you? Not really, because that's not a mandate of CERT. If you look at CERTs in other countries, their mandate, if you look at the incident response, what they do is only content removal. That is, when there's a phishing site, they report it to the ISPs or the TRC and then they block it. That is what most like no one does in terms of social media. What we do just to help the community. Because what about awareness creation? We do a lot of awareness, let me tell you. Um, we do a lot of things when it comes to consultancy. So when it comes to awareness, um, as I told before, we do something called Cyber Security, um, Cyber Security Week. Every year we do have that. That uh, brings uh, a message across to the public and the private government sector about the importance of security. So we do that as a day conference. And we do seminars which is conducted just before and after the conference. And we do uh, awareness at schools, you know, if there's a Island request. Wide? Yes, I mean, In if there's a request. In all three languages? If there's a request, yes, we do. We do. So and within the last year, how many such? Just, just for our viewers to get an right. idea. I do not have that numbers with me, but we've done quite a lot. So if there's a request from any government or any private schools, we do. And also, let me tell you, we've trained uh, the government staffs about uh, on security. So we do. Uh, we have trained the police. So we, we do quite a lot of stuff when it comes to awareness. We, we've, we've, we've done, yes. Okay. And, um, and also, there's a few things on our websites, uh, things like bulletin, so which is updated on a regular basis. Um, on a knowledge base, which is another area where people could update themselves on current trends and um, about security issues. Dylan, something that we see uh, across the board mm. is when an individual, mm. say, goes to the police station and complains about um, a violation of privacy, for example, without knowing where exactly to turn to, um, how does that person then, how is that person supposed to be directed to, um, is it to cert or where does that person go to? Well, I. I don't know if, if that would be a right question to ask at me because, as I told you, it's, um, um, when it comes to social media, or we do that as a community service. But However, then, you do get hundreds of complaints, right? Yeah, because there's no one else to assist. So we do that. Right. I don't deny. So, Asila, but, um, my uh, question to you is, does Sri Lanka have the necessary infrastructure to anticipate cyber attacks? Do we have the necessary... Um, uh, sort of capacity to respond immediately to monitor systems? The short answer is no, uh, but I do know that uh, the government has invested and in the process of do setting up something called the Security Operations Center or SOC for short. Right now, Sonali, what we have, and, and I pity our friend here at the SLCERT, because their mandate is a, a reactive measure. When an incident does happen, it's in this incident response. When, the, for example, the president's website was defaced, the, the SL cert came into force. And the fact that, obviously, the penetration tests, the security assessments, all of that. Uh, Asla, I need not to interrupt you for a second sorry. there. Uh, I, I need to get the attention of uh, Dalan here now. Dalan, he's saying your mandate is a proactive one. Uh, do you a agree? Reactive one. A reactive, a reactive one, sorry. Uh, do you agree? Well, I did. <laughs> Uh, so, are you all a reactive organization or are you all a proactive organization, in simple terms? Proactive in sense uh, awareness. We tell the public in terms of uh, the awareness which is created. Mm -hmm. A reactive comes when there's an incident and we do help them with technical support. So, I said, you mean to say it has to be more or less a proactive approach that needs to be adopted? Well, actually, I, I, I do want to put my gen gentleman friend into a spot. What I said was, uh, yes, they do a lot, 
they they go and do a lot of training mm -hmm. they do a lot uh, in terms of skill development to ensure that people are informed but when you talk about the threats that are happening right now worldwide you need to have measures bells and whistles to tell you when there is an attack approaching or when there is a uh, sustained anomaly in your national infrastructure when it comes to your online presence for example um, you know we know at the time that the terrorist threat was in sri lanka our web government websites were continuously attacked by uh, pro terrorist elements so that was something that you need to coordinate and and look at in a in a more proactive way you need to have you need to have alerts you need to have policies you need to have measures of such a way that there are certain tripwires you know that when an attack is approaching that levels of government are deployed levels of resources are deployed and certain measures are taken to ensure that it is mitigated because we know right now when you have when you're in a big cyber attack or when you're under a massive cyber attack the the only thing you can do is to mitigate the action because if people are motivated enough if people have enough resources at your disposal even the the most top world countries have suffered now we've seen enough and more times the fbi the cia the nsa getting attacked so it is not about how sophisticated you are it is not about how well invested you are but it is about your preparation and this is what i think sri lanka also needs to focus on motion is a government doing enough because it's very clear that it's just not the citizens who have to be watchful Uh, there are two other parties the government and the law enforcement authorities they have a very big role to play and institutions uh, for an example like sri lanka sir okay. do you think that the government is serious about this business this sector i think they are <coughs> because now they have moved into uh, digitization they have realized no point of going to di uh, digitization if you are not concerned on the security as asela said i think security is always being about being proactive if you i mean no point of running behind once somebody had attack the damage has already been done if you look at a social media attack on a uh, maybe uh, a naked picture mm -hmm. the damage is done to that individual so you need to protect so likewise for the government i would say i think they are taking uh, measures i i as asila said i saw uh, security operation center uh, tender been floated they are quite serious and then i know for a fact there is a national defense security operation center is also coming up so the backbone is been done but today but are the people really aware now let's take an example a bank a state sector bank uh, when you approach them and you tell them okay i will send you an email to further communicate whatever has to be done or i will send it through a uh, a electronic signature they would always say no <laughs> that's not the way that we want it to be done we want a written request with your signature placed on it so my question is are they really geared up okay we are getting complex matters right now in place but does that mean that we are creating the right platform for the people to access that technology i think you are absolutely right the problem lies there people it's a process you have people process technology you got to go into that way but unfortunately people go and take the technology first uh say for example um, there is a next generation uh, firewall has come in so the people go and invest they tell the board tell the management sorry i mean if you are to be protected you need to purchase this technology you spend millions of dollars to purchase purchasing that technology then you have the process so your internal process are not telling to the technology that you have purchased so then it runs on default mode so you mean to say people process and processes technology. drive technology yep you can't go the other way around but unfortunately i i see even in sri lanka and many parts of the world they go invest on the technology first then they look for process and then try to look for people and i'll give you a small anecdote uh, this is well known because it's in the public domain now uh, there was a specific type of malware that was created uh called saxnet was aimed at taking down iran's nuclear facilities now mind you all of the nuclear facilities were connected not on the internet it was a local what we call a local area network it was just a network amongst those nuclear reactors or nuclear facilities now the cia wanted to 
uh, dismantle or rather you know make chaos into these facilities so how they did was they actually identified one of the engineers that worked in these plants and in fact just gave them a, a flash drive with with the particular malware and this guy as usual he just went he saw that uh, flash drive he went to work and plugged it in and just just that moment the network was compromised and they could in fact target specifically the centrifuge reactors to make sure that they overheat and there was a ensuing explosion which i i'm told put uh, iran's nuclear ambitions back about 5 to 10 years so that was the damage that you know people and that was not even security because if you look at the technology they took the they took the the precautions they it was it was not connected to the internet it was a local area network i'm sure access was controlled i'm sure people were screened on who and who and what would come but then still you had that weak link in the chain of the people and this is what we keep on advocating um boshan i have a question for you because initially i think um, i didn't get a proper satisfactory response um when an individual has an issue over uh, privacy being violated where does one go to is it on social media or otherwise on social media okay if it's on facebook you can always write to facebook and uh, if there is a uh, a picture it's a false account being created by somebody else you can report it you can report to them and uh, they will check the uh, the whether the person who's reporting is the original owner of or the name of the person is right and they can delete any pictures and uh, if it's nude pictures immediately the pictures will be removed if uh, you report to facebook what about blackmail incidents of blackmail where you have where there is a criminal element yeah. where you have to go to the police station yeah. uh, the same thing i mean you can uh, there is a ccd computer crime division in most of the police stations right now so you can lodge a complaint there and uh, files this that been investigated or the prosecution is taking place you can always if it's the uh, the bullying is been done on uh, social media you can always report to them and they will uh, take care of uh, boshan in in as a precursor to this program i did a bit of research on uh, the cyber um laws in sri lanka but found that it was uh, grossly inadequate there's the computer crimes act number 24 of 2007 which i came across and also there's a clause in the penal code amendment act number 16 of 2006 however uh, the acts don't deal with content related offenses such as pornography harassment perpetrated via ict tools so that's uh, the biggest what's, problem what's we all taking? have yeah. because hackers move much faster than any law and enforcement agency right i mean you're talking about something which happened almost about 10 15 years ago hackers don't use those things anymore right so things how do we keeps on changing make... every day so i think uh, it's it's a fact it's a matter of not only sri lanka globally because what happens today in sri lanka is something different someone does not need to be physical in sri lanka to attack sri lanka so where does the law take in place if something happens so this is the problem that we all face in the uh, cyber world but i think it there should be a collective agreement with the nations around right. start with a particular region and how each nation can support each other in terms of a crime isn't there something like that in place at the moment pushan uh, there is budapest exactly. convention yes. happening in place right i think sri lanka is a part of the it's budapest convention Sign yeah yes sir uh, i would just like to add on the the just to take the uh, situation or scenario you just explain about uh, blackmailing mm. now you can take action within the existing penal structure uh, obviously because Uh, right now the penal code has been extended uh, with various amendments to deal with uh, stuff that are happening in cyberspace mm. so but uh, what happens is if the blackmailing party is not in sri lanka or is a not a resident of sri lanka that's where the challenge law enforcement has mm. uh, for example now when the president's website was hacked the the resident was a sri lankan so law enforcement was quick I believe within about 24 hours they were able to yeah. arrest the assailant yeah. and pr prosecute them under the Computer Crimes Act. But whereas if it's coming from a foreign element, yes, that's where the challenge lies, and that's where something like the Budapest Convention comes into place. Just to add a point of conjuncture, the, we were the second country in Asia after Japan to be a signatory to the Budapest Convention. Now we were invited based on the robustness of our legal uh, framework. 
So I would say, listen, hindsight, I mean, objectively, laws are there, but we can do more. For example, we don't have specific legislation on cyberbullying. We do not have specific legislation on cyber harassment. And probably specific uh, legislation on blackmail that takes place in social media and the cyber space. So that's, yes, that's a vacuna in the law. But right now, I think the law enforcement are trying to take a creative approach, looking at it from the penal code and trying to prosecute. And that's what they're doing. Challenge lies in A, if the party is out of the, out of the shores of Sri Lanka, that's a challenge. But right now, if you do have a problem, you can actually go to the, the I believe the Criminal Investigation Department has the Cybercrime yeah. Division. Yes. And uh, obviously, SL Cert will uh, as well direct you to the Cybercrime Division. So let, 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 let's matter. say, Dalan, we have an issue at hand. Let's say someone um, is using an account that is, as, that is a fake account. What must they do? Can they report directly to Facebook or is it apt for them to come and speak to you all about it? What are the steps that one must adhere to? Right. Um, so if it's an account which is created, a fake account created using Facebook, the first, the individual should report to Facebook. If he has an account, he could report it using his profile. Searching for that fake profile from his account, he could report it. Mm -hmm. And he could ask his friends and colleagues to report so that will be taken off by Facebook. If he doesn't have a Facebook account, still there is a link which can be, if you Google it as how to report and impost a Facebook account, a uh, link which is provided by Facebook, and you try to say that you've been harassed, but you do not have a Facebook account, this is the Facebook link, and if you provide all this information with your ID, you could have either your passport, national ID, which is accepted, and if you send it over to Facebook, they review that and they take it off. I have a question for you now. Um, now, you said that uh, you have to first report to Facebook and then Facebook would suggest that you ask your friends to report the account in particular. Because I have received a lot of complaints from my friends as well on social media saying, can you please report this uh, particular site or particular account? But if it has content which the person who is concerned does not want to share with another party, then what is the option? Yes, it's, it's not a must that he needs to ask his friends to report, but just to make things better and quicker and when there's a lot of alerts on a particular uh, profile, so it's more alerted, so Facebook aware of it. But as, as an individual, if you do report it directly with your photo, if having your photos on Facebook, it would be taken off. Right. You said option one is to report to Facebook and That's get right. your friends and colleagues to uh, report right. it back. Yes. What must he do next? Well. It should be taken off by Facebook, and if it doesn't, then they could approach us. As I said before, this is not a mandate, but we still, we do have a connection. Have you all been successful in the past? Sorry? Have you all been successful in the Obviously, past? Obviously, if you look at the stats and we, if you look at the complaints we receive, uh, we do help a lot of individuals in terms of um, uh, fake accounts or accounts being hacked or you name anything. Now anything one of the problems, Dalan, that a lot of people in Sri Lanka face when a public profile, uh, let's say an individual who is known, uh, has a fake account, someone has created a fake account, um, let's say it's pornography. And uh, after some time, uh, the issue at hand right now would be, I have done my part. I have got Facebook to uh, deactivate the particular account. Everything is hunky dory everything is fine. But that's not the case mentally for that individual. Do you all have like a counselling program for individuals of that sort? Because there have been many instances where young girls have gone to the extent of even committing suicide because of cybercrime. Is there any, any system right now in place? See, uh, uh, I think we, we, what we should do is yeah. more than counselling, trying to avoid that. As I always said, I mean I previously said no point of fi uh, trying to find a reactive measure. So no, prevention we should is try better to, than cure. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. Sure, but, but things like this are happening right now at present. You see, uh, you go to uh, particular sites, you f see young girls, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that this has been uh, videoed without even their knowledge. And the social stigma that is on these young girls and young women is not right. Uh, so what sort of counselling... Do you think that a separate division, or like the NCPA has to come into play and do they have a role here, at least, to counsel these young women who are affected? 
Um, if you ask what we do and how we help to resolve this issue okay. is through awareness. As I said, we go to schools on requests um, and we do make aware of uh, security and how they could keep themselves secure on the internet, things that they should share and they think they should not share and um, how do they be safe and what is privacy and security and how can you have those controls when you're on the internet. So we do what we could as a cert uh, for government staff, you name it, to the public, and a lot of um, TV shows that's been done, so TV programs. So, yes. Adding, adding more, that, uh, more to that, I think there are a lot of counselors are out right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there was about an education exhibition a couple of months back or a couple of weeks back. And uh, there was a total a separate section for counseling. Mm. And I saw almost about 50 to 60 counselors going one-on-one -on -one with the youth. But the fact is whether how many of them will come and open up. And there are certain, I mean, as I said, the, the CCD, Computer Crime Divisions, in the police stations. But how many of them would actually go and make a complaint? So uh, when you look into that, I think there is always a question mark there. Some, I mean, a lot of cases go uh, under the carpet without being reported. And Farad, Farad, uh, I have a so question for yeah, uh, Can I go to Farad yeah. and come back to you, Charita? Yes. Um, just talking about uh, counselling and uh, not to put too much of a finer point on it, uh, I'm sitting here wondering uh, why we're having so much of trouble trying to solve uh, the riddle of the central bank bond matter. Uh, no, no, this is actually a very serious question. Uh, I, I want to know, when somebody deletes information in, in, in a situation like the central bank, where it's, it's all numbers, uh, and there's obviously, you'll have been talking about audit trails and you know, all sorts of information, how easy is it to get rid of information? How easy is it for our investigative teams like the FCID, the FIU and so on to recover that information? Can I ask you? Yes, there is a forensic investigation. So you can trace back uh, when, where, and how those information was uh, deleted, if at all. And uh, you need uh, special skills in that. There are certain tools also that you can use. So certainly it is possible. And um, our investigative teams, who would they have to rely on? Do, would they have to rely on their own in-house thing, or would they have to go to ICTA or to uh, SSRT? You need to get expert uh, advice because whatever you take the evidence has to be proven in the court of law. So if you have collected the evidence in an uh, incorrect or improper manner, so you would lose the case in, in the court. And, and can I ask uh, you, uh, Asena, um, how important was uh, cyber security or, or cyber items in uh, Sri Lanka's war against uh, the terrorism? No, it was absolutely uh, one of the critical things and kudos to the military and the intelligence services for identifying that. Uh, we had several attempts and in fact this is something uh, I think not many people are aware of. Way back in 1998-99, uh, Sri Lankan embassies were spammed incessantly with uh, pro-LTT sympathizers sending them emails and probably this was one of the first documented instances of such a cyber attack on, a, on an embassy. So obviously the LTT as we've seen uh, they were also ahead of their game but our security forces were very much proactive in that. Uh, in fact even in 2009 just when the war was about to come to a closure uh, I recall that the MCNS, the Media Center for National Security, Army.LK, as well as uh, several other government websites were defaced and false information were put on, probably LTT's last-ditch attempt to try to win the misinformation war. And it was quite well, uh, well executed, well done, but still, within a matter of hours, the, the intelligence services and the IT support teams of the military were able to put them back on track. So. It was very critical uh, and w a very critical theater of war, a very critical area which we managed to identify and we managed to counter, which is why I think we resulted in so that. So it is true then to say that Sri Lanka uh, has the necessary expertise and we are not sort of behind the game but we are quite 
uh, at least uh, uh, maybe ahead of the game. It's, we have, we we have, have the expertise. We have the expertise, but just to answer the question that you asked, Boshan, as well, when you take, for example, forensics, yeah. now that is, there's a dual element there. Obviously, there's a technology element where you have tools, but then there's investigative element. Now, when you take specific agencies like the CID, the FCID, FIU, those agencies have investigators who are well versed in the art of investigation. Now, what you need to give them is tools and training to understand the forensics of it because they understand probably the investigation better than all of us, all of the IT experts combined. Yeah. It's, it's how you uh, pinpoint and how you ident identify in an IT system that records have been altered and changed. To answer your question, uh, the Computer Crimes Act talks about alteration of records. So that is a crime and an offense. Um, I just want to keep, uh, I'm not sort of harping on on this, but um, we have had recent uh, media reports that um, you, you're talking about specialist knowledge and specialist, uh, uh, special skills and so on. Uh, and then we have media reports that, uh, for example, some files uh, uh, being investigated by one agency, the police, uh, have been moved to uh, let's say the the stock exchange files have been moved to the SEC. Uh, the uh, national procurement files have been moved to the National Procurement Commission. But we had a specialist agency looking into it as far as at is the a, beginning. Is, is that a, it, is it, a hypothetical? It, no, it's not it, hypothetical. It's it's all is reported. It we all know about it. There's there's a cabinet paper. So there's no there's no hypothetical well, issue. Be. But what I'm trying to say is. Isn't it true that by shifting uh, away from the specialist agencies, they both said the same thing, that this is special. Isn't it true that by moving it away, we are losing uh, the momentum, we are losing the, the, the specialist element of it, and so that we may not get a prosecution when we want it? it it's both ways. It could be that, or it could be the, the particular agency is probably not doing as fast as anybody wanted, so it's been sh uh, shifted to another agency. It's, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, it could be housekeeping. For example, uh, when you talk about a specialist agency right now, there are several. Uh, the FCID handles white-collar crime. The CID handles certain types of special cases, uh, TID and so on and so forth. So it, it may be, I mean, this is obviously beyond, beyond the scope that we are discussing, but it could be... Uh, it could be a policy decision that these were shifted. I, I'm not aware of it, but certainly... Uh, but do you agree then that we do need specialist uh, uh, knowledge, specialist uh, capabilities, yeah. when especially it comes to, let's say, money laundering, uh, under the Money Laundering Act, we have never, ever had a prosecution, a successful prosecution, ever, since the Act came into place. So that, that uh, demonstrates the... Uh, the, what we are saying, because it, yes, there is a money laundering legislation, yes, there is the framework, but how do you prove money laundering in a complex banking system? How do you prove money laundering when it's cross-border, when, when money moves along several state lines? How do you prove that? So that's where forensic expertise comes in, that's where tools come in, that's where spe specialized investigators now for example, we know certain countries have special, special, special centers to educate people. Now, the UK, where you come from, has the Serious Frauds Office, yeah. which, which has a very uh, robust uh, investigative capacity as well as very specialized investigators to do that. So it's, it's a matter of training your people and personnel and investing in the tools and uh, methodologies that that they need to get the job done. So so that, yeah, Dylan, my question is to you. Um, now, according to the Microsoft Malware Infection uh, Index 2017, Sri Lanka ranks among the top 10 countries in the Asia-Pacific region, um, impacted by or facing the growing threat of cybercrime. Mm -hmm. uh, now, in light of this statement, have you seen an increase in the number of uh, attacks uh, or complaints? And if so, what is, uh, what is the trend? Why, why is there an increase? Um, what I would say is that we, most of us are connected to the, to the Internet. And uh, on a day-to-day, -day, anything that we do today, we, we are dependent and we are becoming more dependent on um, the technology and, and 
So the need for security is important. Just being cybercrime means um, when there's a crime that takes place um, using electronic devices or cyber security means how do you safeguard yourself on the internet? So when everything is online and websites or it could be you uh, you connected you're, you connect your, with your phone uh, to a website or you look for something on your phone, so you have to safeguard yourself. So when when there's more and more people are connect being connecting to the technology, so the imp the importance of security is also important. So you need to think how you safeguard because your data, your your privacy, your information, everything is online. So the need is also important. So I think it's it depends on the individual as well. So this is what the awareness is important, and we do. And um, on the, on, a, on the previous question which was asked, I I just want to add to that, which is. Um, we have done something called EduCert. There's something called EduCert which is created. So what we've done is, with the help of Education Ministry, we've trained actually two sets of teachers. That's around 200 to 300 teachers we've trained at zonal levels, which is selected by the Education Ministry. We've trained them, and their target is to go and train teachers at the district levels so that they could be handy when it comes to handling incidents at school, at school levels. So As there are a lot of things that's been done. And also we have something called FinCert. For example, if bank financial institutions work together, I mean, you cannot defeat cyber, cyber terrorism or cyber, um, uh, cyber wars on your own. You just need to work collectively. So, so there's something called FinCert. So all these financial institutions are connected. So what they do is they pass on any information within them and they could report. So information is being shared, which is very important. Uh, uh, Asala, now since we spoke about the banking sector, um, there are concerns that you know banks, because of reputation, may not report uh, Spot cases. On. Yeah. Spot on. So it might be hushed up. So how, how does the banking sector deal with this kind of uh, situation? Uh, just before I answer that, I just wanted to touch on your question on Microsoft to add to the point. Uh, Microsoft is highlighting another point here, uh, although you know not directly. It's saying that we are one of the countries that have a lot of counterfeit software, which is why uh, they are identifying us as one of the top 10 countries prone to cyber attacks because what they say is when you don't buy software that's uh, genuine because we, we have that culture of buying software that is counterfeit. Mm -hmm. When you don't do that, it's actually uh, you're inviting trouble because that software will have malicious code. That software might have backdoors that uh, hackers or any malicious element can get into and you know control your system. To do something you're not, it's not to, supposed uh, to do. Sarita's question, uh, uh, Asela, how do you think that, you know, in terms of cyber security, how must we really move forward? In Sorry, that I didn't catch a question. In the banking in sector. The in sector. the banking sector, so I'll come to that. So I think FinCert is very important because you identified the right issue. The issue was that uh, when you look at large organizations, sometimes they have a problem of disclosing a breach because of reputation or brand damage. Uh, for example, if tomorrow Bank A were to declare that uh, we have been under a ransomware attack or we have been hacked, or several accounts have been hacked, you will have a situation where the depositors might take the cash away to another bank. So we need to have, I think FinCert provides an uh, atmosphere for that. We need to have a way that banks disclose breaches in a secure way so that Agencies like SL Cert or FinCert have the have the capacity to put out statements saying not that a specific bank has been targeted, but this is uh, there's a vulnerability like this which financial institutions are prone to attack. So we could we could they could change the tone, they could anonymize that information, and they could present it so that it is to the benefit of the larger financial system. Thank you very much, like uh, gentlemen, for your thoughts in the uh, first. And I'll, I'll get back to you in a, in yeah. a minute, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Boshan. Uh, we need to go for a short commercial break. Uh, uh, so we're going for a short commercial break. When we come back, uh, we're talking about cybercrime, cybersecurity, and then we'll talk about parental advice as well, all this and more of this short commercial break. Stay connected. Stay with Face the Nation. We will be right back.